Welcome back, friends. So in the previous video, we saw function declarations. And we made two function declarations called say hello and do something. And we call these functions. So in this video, we are going to continue with JavaScript functions. And that means that the next thing that we are ready to do is, well, we're going to talk about arguments. Now, up until this point, the functions that we created, well, they pretty much do the same thing every time, right? When we call them, they always do a static action, which prints out the same sentences to the console. For instance, this say hello function, when we call this function, it always prints out hello world to the console. But what if I wanted to have a function say hello that could say a different hello? So maybe you could say, hello, John. But it could also say, hello, Sarah, or hello, whatever name we put in here. <laughs> so to do that, we're going to need to talk about arguments. So arguments are how we can write functions that take inputs. Functions that we declare so far haven't taken any inputs. All right, so let's uh, just do up an example. I'll create another function here called say hi. So I write the function say hi and my parenthesis, okay. So what this function will do is that it's going to take a name, any name, and then it will console.log that say and whatever name that we give as an argument to this function, right? So here I'll say console.log and hi plus an empty string here to put a space between the words then plus and name. So my function is going to take this name as an argument when we call this function. So I say name right in here. Okay. So the syntax to say that function is expecting something to be passed in. You follow, right? It's expecting an argument. It looks like this rather than just an empty princess here. So we put the name of an argument. So in this case, we called it name. And this, of course, can be called anything at all. It's just a placeholder. So whenever the user calls, say hi, and we pass in a name, maybe Sarah. Well, this Sarah name is going to hold the value of Sarah temporarily. Because if the user calls, say, hi with John as a name, then it's going to hold the value of John. So that means then we can use the name inside of the function. So in this case, cancel.log, say, hi name. It's just going to take whatever name was passed in the parenthesis and console log it with, say, hi. All right, so that's that. Let's do up an example. I'll say, say hi and call it, putting it in my parenthesis. You remember that we talked about this in the previous lecture. We just need to put a parenthesis to call a function. So inside the parenthesis, I'll write Sarah. Now let's go to our console. And here I'll refresh the page. And now we see hi Sarah in the console. All right, so let's go back to our code. Now, what we've done in here is that we put a, this kind of Sarah instead of name in the background. So down here, I'm going to call this function with a different name. I call say hi with John this time. I go to the console, and here I refresh the page. We see hi Sarah and hi John here. So we didn't have to create different functions to say, hi, Sarah, and hi, John. We created one function, and we passed an argument. So that means we've customized our function. Now, that opens up the whole world of using arguments. Well, that's what makes our functions super powerful. And I'll try not to get too excited. So let's say on a website like Facebook, there might be a function called make a homepage. And yeah, it lets you make a homepage. 
So it's going to take information as arguments about the user who's logged in. It's about making a little machine that can take in an argument and then spits out something else. So let's make another example. Here I'll say function cube. And what this function is going to make is it's going to take a number as an argument and then it is going to console log the cube of that number. So to be able to do that, this function needs to get an argument, and I'll call that argument as number. So I say number here. And down here, I say console.log number times number times number. Okay? Okay. Now let's go test it out. So here, when I call this function, I say cube, and inside of it, I say three. So I'll go to my console, and here we see 27 on the console. So when I want to calculate the cube of a different number, all I need to do is call this function with a different number. For instance, here I'll say cube and 79. Go to my console, and yeah, here we see the cube of 79. So now let's return our code. Also, we're not just limited to one argument. Our functions can take multiple arguments. So why don't we do an example that calculates the body mass index? Everybody's concerned about BMI these days, right? So I'll just say function BMI. And it takes a length and a weight. And then we divide the weight with a square of the length. All right, you might say height, but what if we're calculating the BMI of a baby? Okay, here inside the function, I say console.log and weight divide length times length. And then to call this function, we just pass in two numbers separated by a comma. So the first value corresponds with length and I say, 1.80 meters, we'll say, and the second one corresponds with weight, and for weight I'll say 85 kgs for kilograms. So, it just comes down to the order. You see that? So if I switch these two and I put 85 first, 85 would be the length, and 1.80 would be the weight. Kind of different. Okay, so now I'll return to the code again and go to my console, refresh the page, and here we can see the calculated BMI. Okay, so let's go back to the code editor. So arguments are one of the important pieces, um, and they make functions really useful because it's not only about shortening our code and repeating the same chunk of code every time that we'll say like, uh, you know, for instance, say hello, um, it's also about making that code change a little bit depending upon certain inputs. So here are a few examples of when you might want to use arguments in a real web app. So imagine that we have a web game, and in that game there's a score for every player, and the player can do some things that can increment or decrement that score. So if a player does something crazy, Right? We might have a function called add to score. And if we want to give them a lot of points, we'd pass in 100 points. Now, let's say if a user dies, then we might subtract 100 points. So I'll give you another example. Imagine that we had a site that has an authentication. So we might have a function called check user info, and it would take two arguments email, password. So we might pass something in like john at email.com or something and a password like 1234. And then check user info would take that email and the password and would check them and make, uh, well, a certain decision. So there would probably be an if statement in there. It would check to see if they match correctly. And if they did, then log in, else it shows us an error message. 
So the ability of functions to take arguments is one of the most important parts of writing functions. Yeah. Not just about repeating code. Let's say, say hello over and over and over again. But it is about repeating code that we can also change a little bit. And that can have some variables. So arguments empower us. They let us customize the function. All right? So that's it for function arguments. We're going to, yeah, let's pause right here and we'll pick it up in the next section.